Is this as good as it's gonna get? For home buyers, that is, inventory is at the highest it's been in the last four years in the condo market, and it's about to be that way in the single family market, too. Interest rates are down by quite a lot. While prices are still appreciating, it seems that they have, well, leveled off from that nosebleed territory. Pretty much every market dynamic has improved for home buyers. The one that has started to fall apart as everything else comes in line for them is that the economy seems to be. Hmm, how do I say this? Yeah, it seems to be falling apart. We are definitely going to talk about that, but let's take a look at one of the last weeks of the summer. This is the uh, calm before the storm, if you will. In this video, we're going to go over the single family income markets in the state of Massachusetts. We're also going to do a quick interest rate update, and we're going to talk about some relevant current events. Hi, I'm Jeff Chubb, a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent and real estate investor that has sold more than a thousand homes. If you have any questions in regards to real estate, then no, I'm here to help. Buyers are now paying the two and a half to 3% buyer agent commission when buying a house. A buyer can't even see a house without signing a buyer commission form acknowledging that they're going to be paying that much for that house. We are different from everyone else. We offer our purchase power plan where home buyers can save thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars in this plan. Buyers actually pay for our services by the hour instead of a percentage of the purchase price. By the way, we do the old way too, just letting you know that. But reach out if you're a serious buyer that is looking to buy a house and wants to save a small fortune. Let's jump into the single family market stats. Inventory, it continues to be level. It's gonna stay this way until we see that big Labor Day dip and then start growing for that fall market push. We now have 5,099 single family homes on the market in the state of Massachusetts. We have now stayed in a plus or minus 50 unit range for the last six weeks. It's safe to say that inventory is level in the single family market because we now have 0.47% more homes on the market than just 28 days ago. We now have 1,076 more houses on the market when compared to the same week last year. The levels between 2002 and today continue to tighten as we now have 83 fewer houses on the market compared to 2022. Now there's a good chance that next week we'll officially be back in a four year high for single family inventory levels in the state of Massachusetts. So stay tuned. Now this week we listed 913 single family homes in the state of Massachusetts. We listed eight additional houses compared to the same week last year. So new listings increased by 0.9%. The four week rolling average is 974 units. Under agreement, took a big plunge this week from the numbers of last week. This week we put 851 single family homes under agreement, but this is a nine unit difference or 1.1% less than the same week last year when we put 842 houses under agreement. That four week rolling average, that's 956 units. So when compared to last year's market, new listings were up by 0.9%, while under agreements, they were up by 1.1%. This is a pretty similar market. The pending new listing ratio is 92.2%, which is compared to the 91.6% that we saw this week last year, similar. And what this means is that 92% of all the properties that came on the market two weeks ago went under agreement last week. There are 887 single family houses that closed this week for an average sales price of $852,000 and a median sales price of $675,000. Sales levels compared to the same week last year were up by 100 units or 12.7%. There were 787 single family homes that sold last week for an average sales price of $795,000. This week, months of inventory increased slightly to 1.64 months from last week's 1.63 months. 1.64 months this week is compared to 1.35 months this week last year. Real quick, it's my shameless plug. I just wanted to mention that if you were thinking about buying or selling a house, then it would be a true pleasure to help you. Now onto the condo market. We now have 2,733 condos on the market as of Monday, an entire four units less than last week. This means that there is 1.9% less inventory in the market today than the inventory levels of 28 days ago. We now have 552 more units on the market today than today last year. Last week, this difference was 553 units, so not much of a change there. 257 more than compared to the inventory levels of 2022 and 88 more units than in 2021. There are 394 condos that came on the market last week with that four-week rolling average of 411 units. The 394 units listed was 23 units or 6.2% more than the 371 condos that came on the market the same week back in 2023. This week, we put 348 units under agreement. Now the 348 condo sales was 12 units or 3.6% more condos than last year when we put 336 condos under agreement. A four-week rolling average, that was 370 units. So 6.2% more listings that came on the market when compared to this week last year while selling 3.6% more condos. The condo pending new listing ratio this week bumped up to 86.4%. This is compared to the 86.8% 
if we saw this time last year, there were 271 condos that sold this week for an average sales price of $676,000 and a median sales price of $550,000. The same week last year, the 307 units that sold, so sales levels were down by 11.7%. Months of inventory, it stayed level at 2.04 months. This is compared to the months of inventory uh, levels of last year, 1.63 months this week last year. Now, any chance you can do me a huge favor? Can you hit that like button right down there? Believe it or not, just makes a huge difference for me and the channels. Just place it that YouTube algorithm. Well, subscribing if you're enjoying the content, then I appreciate you considering subscribing because that one doesn't hurt either. But time to talk about interest rates. Interest rates fell a tiny bit this week. Now, I'd expect it to be this way until we get some bad economic news that shakes the market or the Fed. Um, make some moves. So one of those two things need to happen. But interest rates, they are down by a third of a point this month and are down 0.84% from this time last year. Now, have you heard about any talk about foreclosures skyrocketing? Let's dig into the data a little bit. Now, July 2024 foreclosure data reported that a total of 31,929 properties uh, in the U.S. had foreclosure filings, default notices, scheduled bank options, or bank repossessions. This is up 15% from a month ago and up slightly 0.2% from a year ago. Now, look, I continue to not be worried about foreclosures in the country because increasing home prices continue to push values up of homes all across the nation. This boosted equity for homeowners helps all owner homeowners, even ones in default. In other words, the majority of homeowners who are in default can and will sell their house and put a nice chunk of money in their pockets, plus the added benefit of not being foreclosed on, and that helps create, uh, not create, I should say, a tailspin in the economy. Now, Delaware, Nevada, and Utah posted the highest foreclosure rates, while California, Florida, and Texas posted the greatest numbers of foreclosure starts. So those states need to look out for things to come. Now, I'm not worried about foreclosures, especially here in Massachusetts, and you shouldn't be worried about them either. But let's look at some other recent events. Some make sense, others don't. But what doesn't make sense is that housing starts and building permits plunge. Now, housing starts plunge 6.8% month over month, while permits plunge 4%. These are the lowest levels for starts and permits since the COVID lockdowns. Builders are backwards looking. Builder sentiment is in, in the tank. So it makes sense that they're actually starting to pull back. Again, this doesn't affect Massachusetts too much because the amount of new construction on single family homes, it's almost anemic. But interest rates are down. This is the end of be all for the real estate market. We, the real estate industry, we've been in a recession for the last two years. Interest rates are the lifeline that's about to pull us out of it. Here's a benefit of interest rates falling. Mortgage refi activity jumped the most since 2020. The article states that mortgage lenders have endured a brutal two and a half year period of the Fed rate hiking cycle. And they're not lying, by the way. Refinance applications were at a multi-decade low. For the week of August 9th, the Mortgage Bankers Association saw the refinance index jump 34.5%. This is a more than two-year high. As of now, traders show that they expect the Fed to do four 25 basis point cuts by the end of the year. And the last thing that really ties all of these economic issues in a pretty little bow is what Milton Friedman said five decades ago, because it still rings true today. There's no such thing as an unbalanced budget. You pay for it either in the form of taxes or indirectly in the form of inflation or debt. Keep your eye on how much the government is spending because that is the true tax. It's just something to keep in mind as we come into another budgeting process and as we start hearing about the different platforms, Republican Democrats, and what they're saying and what they're offering. More government spending will result in higher prices for everything. And last time I checked, everything included housing. You want more affordability in your marketplaces than demand your politicians to live within their means when it comes to government spending. Because God knows that you and I have to. Want to talk about your own personal real estate needs? Again, it's Chef Chubb. Whether you're looking to buy or sell a house in the next nine or 90 days, then I'd love to chat with you and just find out a little bit more about your real estate goals. And if you know of anyone that's thinking about buying or selling a house, then I truly appreciate you passing along my contact information. You can visit us at youtuberealestateagent.com or find all my contact information in the description below right down there. Until next time.